Hey everyone, welcome back. Today in this video, we're gonna see how good this budget oscilloscope is for diagnosing different network on a car. You already know that on a car, we may have different type of network. The most common ones are CAN bus, K line, and the LIN bus. So on this car, I have all those networks, and I'm gonna use this budget oscilloscope today to diagnose all different type of network that I have on this car. If you have watched other videos on the channel, you might have seen some other videos using the oscilloscope and diagnosing the network, but the oscilloscopes that I used on those videos, they were either too small or too difficult to set up. If oscilloscope screen is too small, it's gonna be really hard to read the waveform and analyze it. If oscilloscope has too many cables, it's gonna be really time consuming to set it up. That's why I was looking for a budget oscilloscope to be able to read the waveforms properly in a nice screen. And at the same time, giving me that flexibility to read the waveform very quickly. I don't need to spend too much time to set up the oscilloscope. So today in this video, I'm gonna check the canvas first, then we go for the lean bus. And at the end of the video, we're gonna check the K line as well. And we're gonna read and analyze the waveform on all those networks on a car because actually one of the advantage of having oscilloscope for diagnosing is on the network. We can use it for diagnosing the network. So this oscilloscope that I'm using today is from FNIRC and this is the model of this oscilloscope. For finding more details, you can check the description. Before starting the video, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe. You can also find our online courses on video description. We have one full online course for CAN bus diagnostic and one full online course for K line and lean bus diagnostic. You can find the links for those online courses in the video description or the first comment down below. First of all, we're gonna go for the CAN bus. I'm not gonna explain the basic of the CAN bus. We have some other videos on the channel for CAN bus, everything you need for the CAN bus, you can find on those videos. I put the link for those videos in the video description. Today, we're gonna go for diagnosing and reading the waveform straight away. But what you need to know about the network, if you haven't watched those videos so far, is CAN bus is a high speed network, which is connecting several control units together. We may have high speed or low speed CAN bus. Today we're gonna check the high speed CAN bus which is more common on different cars. CAN bus consists of a pair of twisted wires. It means we have two wires on the CAN bus. Those two wires are called CAN bus high and CAN bus low. High speed CAN is connected on some control units like engine control module, ABS, transmission, instrument cluster, and some more control units based on the number of options that you have. But one end of those two wires of the network is inside the OBD2 connector, what we have right now here. Because when you connect your scan tool, the scan tool is gonna communicate with those control units on the CAN bus, and it will read the information through the network. So we should be able to find the CAN bus right here on OBD2 connector. If there is anything wrong on the CAN bus, most likely we will have no communication or limited communication between the scan tool and those control units on the network. Sometimes multimeter is not gonna help to identify the issue. Reading the waveform of the CAN bus with oscilloscope is gonna be a great help. So right now I'm gonna set up the oscilloscope to read the waveform and to will see how this budget oscilloscope is gonna perform. So on the oscilloscope itself, as you see, I have two channels, channel one and channel two. The good thing about this oscilloscope is having two channels at the same time, because on the network, on the CAN bus, I have two wires. Having two waveforms at the same time is gonna give us more flexibility for diagnostic. And this is the prop of the oscilloscope. This end is gonna sit on the oscilloscope itself, and this is for picking up the signal from CAN bus high or CAN bus low. Really easy to set up. So this end is gonna sit right here. And channel two. So both channel one and channel two, they already set up. So right now on OBD2 connector, these two pins, pin number six and 14, they are actually for the CAN bus high and CAN bus low. If you look at the back, you see these two wires. This red one is CAN bus high and this blue one is CAN bus low. I'm gonna insert the prop from here because these test props are really thin they're not gonna damage the pins from here i put the green one on canvas high and the black one on canvas low 
I have a stand at the back of this oscilloscope, which is gonna make it easier to work with. I put the channel one on canvas high, just like this. And this black alligator should be connected to the ground. And channel two on canvas low, on pin number 14. Just make sure they are not touching. I need to turn the ignition switch on to be able to read the waveform. We can't bring the waveform down because it was at the top. And the color code of the waveform is gonna tell you which one is which. Yellow one is from channel one. Channel two is off. I'm gonna click on here and I turn on the channel two as well. Let's adjust the channels first. Channel two, this is channel two. Uh, channel one, a little down. So right now we can see both CAN bus high and CAN bus low, but they are really fast. So we can adjust the time setting from here. If I click on here, this is the time setting that we have right now. Let's go for another time setting. For example, if I put the time setting on something smaller, we see more details. And if I stop the waveform, you see the CAN bus high and CAN bus low right now. You can zoom the network from here. You can see this part of the network very clearly. This yellow one is CAN bus high and blue one is CAN bus low. So the first thing that we need to find out is to make sure if waveforms actually exist, if both CAN bus high and CAN bus low, they are giving us waveform. That's the first thing that we need to make sure it does exist the second one we need to make sure there is no abnormality on the waveform there is no sudden spike on the voltage or drop on the voltage it should be uniform like this but one of the most important one is to make sure the voltage on the cam bus high and low is within the range you can check the voltage with multimeter but multimeter is not that much fast to read the maximum and minimum voltage exactly like oscilloscope it's gonna read the voltage but it's gonna be something an average but right now the voltage changes very quickly on CAN bus high and CAN bus low for example on CAN bus high if I select the cursor from here to read the minimum and maximum we can put this V1 on maximum and V2 on base voltage which is just right here so we are reading the base voltage and maximum voltage on CAN bus high and as you see we are getting 2.4 on CAN bus high on the baseline and 3.47 on V1 which is the maximum voltage it's really important to remember that on high speed CAN on the CAN bus high voltage changes quickly between 2.5 to 3.5 that's what we get on oscilloscope quickly changing from 2.5 to 3.5 this is exactly what oscilloscope tells us if I put this one on channel 2 Let's put V2 on here on the minimum voltage and V1 on the base voltage. So I zoomed it a little more to have a better view. So right now this blue one is CAN bus low. On the CAN bus low voltage changes between 2.5 to 1.5. So it's gonna drop from 2.5 to 1.5 when CAN bus is generating the voltage on the base on v1 right here we are getting 2.4 it's giving us 1.38 in this moment which is very close to what we want on the canvas low as i said we need the waveform to change quickly between 2.5 which is this baseline to 1.5 which is here and we are getting almost same value so what we are getting here is pretty normal we have the waveform from each one from the canvas high and canvas low and the minimum and maximum voltage on each one is exactly normal they should be symmetrical as well as you see they are completely symmetrical this yellow waveform and blue waveform they are completely symmetrical if you do not have the waveform right here most likely your scan tool won't be able to communicate with multiple control units and on some cars you won't be able to start the car as well so this is the CAN bus so far so good this budget oscilloscope is reading the CAN bus very good let's go for the lean bus and then after that for the K line for reading the lean bus you need to find out where lean bus is located on 
that car that you are working on. Lean bus can be used on different systems. On this car, I have the lean bus on battery sensor. I explained this battery sensor on the lean bus on another video. I'm just trying to see if this oscilloscope picks up the signal properly. So on this one, I have lean bus connected on the battery sensors, sending the information of the battery to the engine control module. So we can pick up the waveform of the lean bus from this battery sensor. But before that, you need to know that lean bus is a low speed network, which only uses one wire for the communication. CAN bus that I explained earlier is a multi-master network. It means each control unit on the CAN bus is a master node. But lean bus is the master slave network. It means in this case, engine control module is a master node and battery sensor is a slave node. So it means ECM requests the information and battery sensor responds through the network, which is just right here on the wiring. So let's go for inserting the test prop and reading the waveform and I'm gonna explain everything on the oscilloscope. So the first step is to insert the test prop. Right here we have two wires on battery sensor. This brown one is the wire for the lean bus. I'm gonna insert the test prop right here. Connector should be connected. On oscilloscope, I'm gonna use only one channel as uh, channel one because as I said, lean bus only has one wire. So I don't need the channel two anymore. I'm gonna use only channel one. Here for picking up the signal from lean bus and this one on a good ground. So on the oscilloscope, as you see, we are getting a waveform, but it's quite big. So we need to adjust the voltage setting to be able to read it properly. So I can adjust the voltage setting from here. and the time setting, one millisecond time setting. And for the voltage, I can increase it a little. So this is the waveform that I'm getting from the lean bus. I'm gonna pause the waveform. So this is the waveform that we are getting. So let's zoom the waveform and see what we can get from it. The first thing, as I said on CanBus, is we need to make sure the waveform is present and we don't have any abnormal fluctuation on waveform. It looks okay right now, but, but we need to take some measurements. I'm gonna go for the cursor. I put the V1 on here and V2 on here. As you see, the voltage range on the lean bus is way different from the CAN bus. Generally, the voltage that you are getting here should be very close to 12. Right now, I'm getting over 11 volts. And the minimum voltage right now should be something less than one ohm, sometimes around 600 or 700 millivolt. Right now I'm getting a little more than 600 millivolt, which shows that the lean bus is working properly. When lean bus is working, master node keeps asking information and slave node keeps responding. If you look at the waveform right now, if I pause it here, you see this waveform, which is actually the data request and data response. But let's see what's gonna happen if I disconnect the connector from a battery sensor. I'm gonna run the waveform. I disconnect the connector from battery sensor, but I keep the prop connected. As you see, the waveform that we are getting is much smaller. This is only the data request from ECM in this case. ECM keeps asking for information, but because battery sensor connector is disconnected, it's not gonna respond, that's why waveform is different, it's shorter compared to the other one. If I connect it back and run the waveform, you see waveform is already longer because slave node is responding. So using this cursor, we can read the maximum and minimum voltage. We have vertical cursor for reading the time as well. We have trigger over here as well. We can adjust the trigger on different modes, for example, rising edge or falling edge. Over here, we can set the trigger to make sure that we can see that part of the waveform that we are after. But of course, you can watch the other videos that we have on the channel for full diagnostic of lean bus. So, so far so good. It reads the lean bus properly as well. Let's go for the K line. The next network that we are trying to diagnose with this oscilloscope is K line. K line is very similar to the lean bus, but it's used for some other purposes. The main use of the K line is for the scan tool communication with control units. 
but over the time K line has been replaced by the CAN bus so that's why on this car you see that the K line is used only for communication between the scan tool and some control units like BCM and immobilizer but for other control units like engine transmission, ABS, electric power steering and so on they use CAN bus for scan tool communication K-Line is very similar to the Lean bus. it uses only one wire for the communication and for diagnosing the best way is to find it and check it with oscilloscope on this car as you see the wire diagram on the screen we have the body K-Line on pin number 12 of the OBD2 connector it's a yellow red wire if you look at the OBD2 wiring at the back you see this yellow red wire this one is for the K-Line I have to back prop this one because I'm gonna connect the scan tool and to see when a scan tool is requesting some information how K-Line works because we need to pick up the waveform when there is a signal and because these wires are used for communication between the scan tool and some control units like the BCM or immobilizer anytime that you request something from the scan tool there's gonna be communication and you can read the waveform so I'm gonna insert the test prop from here so oscilloscope prop right there and because I'm going to read the waveform when a scan tool is communicating with BCM I'm gonna connect the scan tool right here so as you see ignition switch is on but I'm not getting any waveform so I'm gonna connect the scan tool it detected the car let's go for diagnosis we're gonna select one system control units and then let's go for BCM so look at the waveform we are not getting any waveform right now, but see what's going to happen. You see the waveform? So we are getting the waveform right now, but let's perform some action. If I go to the live data, you see, we are getting more and more waveforms when we are requesting some information. So this waveform that we get right now, if I pause it, this is coming from the K-Line because my scan tool is trying to communicate with BCM right now through the K-Line and that was the pin number 12 on this car for the K-Line. K-Line could be on different pin numbers on DLC connector, on OBD2 connector because using the K-Line on different cars can be different. Again, there is a video for the K-Line. You can find that on video description. So right now that we are getting the waveform, it means Kalan is working for providing the communication between my scanner and BCM. If there is no waveform right here, it means there is no communication. Look at the waveform right now. Presence of the waveform is good. Very similar to K-Line. If I read the voltage, you see the minimum and maximum voltage that I'm reading right now is going to give me something very similar to K-Line. A little over 11 on here and very close to 600 millivolts on minimum voltage. This is what we are supposed to get when we are reading the waveform on the K-Lines. As you see, this oscilloscope is covering all different type of networks that we are dealing with. And if I disconnect the scan tool from BCM, so I disconnected the scan tool from BCM, there is no waveform anymore because connection between BCM and oscilloscope is already terminated and we don't need the K-Line anymore right now. All right, guys, this was a quick introduction to different type of important networks that we have on the car, CAN bus, K-Line and Lean bus, and how we can use a budget oscilloscope for reading the waveform and analyzing the waveform. As you saw, this oscilloscope is not that big, it's not that much small, it's touch screen and the setup is quite easy. We can use it for many diagnostic purposes, not only on a network, we can use it for diagnosing many components on engine or other systems as well. Thank you very much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to visit the channel page for many more diagnostic videos that we have.